Don't be fooled. This is just some lame conspiracy smokescreen thrown up by Gibson to cover up the Mesa acquisition. Well, it's been an interesting week. Let's just say that. And given some of the nut job conspiracies that I've seen spewn in the comments over the last few videos that I've done, well, you know what? That actually sounds a little bit reasonable in comparison. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to episode number 286 of SMG Viewers Comments. Now, I actually shot the original 286 a couple weeks ago before the shit hit the fan in Washington and Gibson bought Mesa and the cats are walking with dogs, the sky's upside down, the world's falling apart. Anyway, so I thought I'd put that episode out next week and make a special episode for this week, just because we've got so many interesting comments from you, the amazing viewers. Now, in case you missed it, and apparently not a lot of you did, I did a couple episodes of the frickin' news because just so much was happening, and I asked you guys about the whole thing. Hey, would you like to see more news content in the show? And I got some great responses. Can you do actual news, like, all the time? You explain this more calmly and clearly than most outlets. Well, honestly, I think that's something that's really missing in a lot of American news sources is uh, fairness and calm and not writing the same issue over and over and over and over again. Okay, I'll admit, right here, I am guilty about doing that exact same thing to drum samples and shitty bass players. Okay, but I do think there needs to be a news outlet that maybe takes things maybe a little bit more down the center approach and aims to achieve calm instead of keeping everybody angry all the time. This is like CNN on steroids. Stick to music. Okay, I pr I'll promise you this. I'm not going to do news just for the sake of doing news. That You guys have plenty of that already. But when something important happens, maybe I'll do an episode once in a blue moon just to keep you guys up to speed because number one they're an awful lot of fun and number two there there's you guys like watching them now the numbers do not lie i'm shooting this on wednesday night this is going to come out on friday and i shot this video the previous saturday and it's already got eighty three thousand views that's absolutely insane that's one of the biggest videos i've done in the last year uh, by way of comparison i did a video on the top 10 rock and roll movies and that got not even 5,000 views yet, and it's been out for about 12 hours. So just shows me what you guys really want to watch. I mean, like, that's the thing. You guys can tell me what you want to see, but what you actually click on are two very different things. Then again, I don't want this to turn into trash news hour. That's not the aim of this channel. So it's only going to happen once in a while. I find it funny that a few of your fans love you saying nobody cares if you are offended about facts and all that until they realize that you present facts that they don't like. No idea what you're talking about. Glenn, I want you as an escape. Please don't do the news. Okay, once again, news will not be the focus of this channel. I want to focus on recording tutorials and beating up really shitty gear like Clark Technic 2 BQs because that's a lot of fun as well. The one thing I can say, though, is if you don't want to watch the news, just remember, nobody is forcing you to watch it. Bear that in mind before you click on it and get mad about something. Love musicians for the great art they make. If I live my life based on what musicians do, I'd be a toxic twin. Now, that's probably the best advice I've seen written down in the comments in quite some time. Yeah, you know what? It's like, I like a lot of musicians. I'm not going to go do heroin just because they did. This was awesome. Please do more. It really says something that you gave the most unbiased coverage of what happened. Please keep it up because it's nice to see cooler heads prevail. Keep it up and fuck you, Glenn. Well, dude, I'm really glad you enjoyed it. A lot of people did. A lot of people didn't. A lot of people got angry. A lot of people said, how dare you have an opinion about world events? You're a Canadian. You're not allowed. Then, of course, I got a bunch of, I can't believe you said that. I'm unsubscribing. Wham, 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 as they run away. I, I don't get that. If you're really that pissed off, you don't like the content, just unsubscribe and go away. I don't understand why you need to make a big show of it. But then again, all you people who've stuck around with me through this show and through the years, I very much appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. I think I'm better than you, and you have way more amps than me. Well, I might have an amp or two here in the collection, but this is the thing. I might be a little bit older than you as well and have built up my collection over the years. Uh, here's the thing when it comes to scoring endorsement deals with brands and whatnot. Uh, just remember this. The world is filled with awesome guitar players. You've got to be able to offer something maybe a little bit more to a company than just the ability to play your guitar very, very well. You say you're better than me, and I've got no reason to doubt that. There's a lot of other guitar players that are better than me as well. 
But you gotta ask yourself this, what have you done to help a brand? Do you know anybody at that brand? Have you reached out? Have you even sent an email out to a brand? This is the thing, if you wanna work with companies, they'd probably love to do it. All you gotta do is ask. Good! My band is about to break up because we can't practice because of COVID. Any advice to prevent that from happening? And as always, fuck you, Glenn. Yeah, stop whining about it and stay together. I mean, seriously? Oh, we can't practice because of COVID. Well, guess what? Everybody else is doing the same thing. I don't know. Maybe try doing it over video conferencing. Can we do Zoom jams? Is that even possible? I know there's a jam room on the SMG Discord. Maybe you guys should come hang out there and jam with each other. Maybe you can get some encouragement from some of the other guys as well. Maybe you can get some help. I definitely recommend that. Links are in the description below. If you haven't joined the SMG Discord, make sure you do. The Harley Benton is 800 AU before tax and shipping. All that was included would bring the price close to 1,000 AU. It may have changed since I last checked a couple of months ago, though. Oh, yeah, that's the one bad thing about Australia. You know, your dollar is worth about as much as the Canadian dollar is, and I'm sure your taxes are just as bad. Australia, the country with that awesome internet that uses two tin cans and some string in between them. Is that how you're doing your internet these days, or have you evolved to smoke signals? Seriously, though, if you're a musician and you're sick and tired of paying insane import charges to get your guitars into your country, maybe you should call up your local member of parliament and remind them that election day is coming. All right, guys, now I'm sure more than a few of you have noticed my amazing evidence or STFU shirt. Um, I've been wearing this for the last couple weeks and it works for all kinds of occasions, not only for tube tests, but uh, going to religious services and all that kind of cool stuff. Seriously though, given the light of recent events, I thought I'd bring it back for this weekend only. I was gonna put it away for good, but I thought, ah, oh, what the hell, it kinda suits the mood for the times. So this shirt's gonna be available till the end of Sunday, then it's gone for good. And oh yeah, just to make things extra fun, I brought this one back as well. Got polio, me neither, vaccines work, dumbass. In light of recent worldwide events, I thought this might get your message across just a little bit more plainly. Anyway, that one's gonna be available till Sunday night as well, so grab it while you can. Now back to the show. I didn't subscribe to your channel because of this post. You previously mentioned a desire to build a channel, get more subscribers. You won't do it slamming companies that helped build much of the music we listen to today. E.g. Jimmy Page, Les Paul, Dua Rectifier, and Grunge Era. I suspect people who slam these companies don't have the money to purchase them, so they take solace in believing crap like Behringer is just as good. Oh, Dougie, did you even watch my video? Did you notice this giant rack of amps behind here? <laughs> oh, look, there's a Soldado over there, 5150. My dual rectifier is just below. Let's see if I can get a shot of that. Hold on. Oh, look at that. It's my Tyrant rectifier. Used on the first two Woods of April album. Here's the thing, Dougie, I can afford to buy this stuff. I choose not to because I don't like throwing my money away. Now, Mesa builds some decent amps, there's no question about it, but I do have some serious questions about tuning stability on Gibson guitars. I think they're very overpriced for what they can do. And honestly, I think a lot of the guitars coming out of Korea and Indonesia blow the fucking doors off them. Hi Glenn, what's your opinion on musicians fighting over analog and digital sound and using an amp sim live? Basically, my friend decided to take a laptop to band practice because it's easier than hauling his gear from one practice room to another, and every other band member told him that he sounds too digital and that he should have used his JCM 800 instead. But when we jamming, he was using his real amp and my sound on a laptop was better than his. We also plan to use a laptop live because latency eight samples on a UMC 2020 HD and monitoring isn't an issue. And also I think that overall sound guy can't fuck up that much if he only gets a line input instead of having to mic up a cabinet too. Also, what the fuck even is a digital sound? Cheers. Wow, lots to unpack on that one. Maybe I should go backwards on this one. Your big concern with live isn't gonna be the latency, it's gonna be monitoring. Make sure you have something to monitor your guitar through. Do not rely on the house sound guy for that. No, do not do it. You will regret it. So make sure you've got some kind of a clean power amp and a cabinet to run through because you are going to need it. Otherwise, you aren't gonna hear your guitars through the monitors. I almost fucking guarantee it. Now, as for your bandmates whining that it sounds too digital, yeah, you know what? Chances are they probably couldn't tell the fucking difference. It's hard to say either way, but I do know this. Amp sim technology has come a very long way and it's getting better and better. And as technology moves forward, you're gonna see more and more guys plugging into their laptops rather than real tube amps because probably the, the I would imagine that the laptops are gonna ultimately be far more reliable. 
IRs, drum samples, time alignment, etc. are for people like me who just want to write songs and need to get the recording done ASAP with minimum work and have it sounding decent enough to evaluate the quality of the songs. Hey, Carlos, I certainly don't contest that. There's there's absolutely some truth to that. I think that's that's absolutely fine for songwriting. The problem is a lot of guys do that for their productions and leave it at that and don't move forward. Hey, Gellin, I'm a massive fan and have been watching since 2013. Keep up the awesome work. I want to ask you, how do you think quantum computing and artificial intelligence can be involved to music and mixing, or does it really matter to the music industry in your opinion? Hey, Oliver, thanks for writing in, and thanks for following the show for so many years. It's my pleasure to put your question up here. I think that's a, a great question to ask. I think we're going to see some really awesome stuff in the field of amp sims and simulators of compressors and EQs and that stuff, like old-style analog gear. I know there's a lot of machine learning stuff coming down the pipe, and there's going to be some really cool developments. So you're going to be able to get stuff that works like a real LA-2A or an 1176 or, or something like that, or you know, DBX-160 that's going to sound exactly like the real thing. That's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Same thing's going, coming along with guitar amp sims. They're getting better and better and better and better. And we're going to get to the point very soon, I think, where you really won't be able to tell the difference. Like years ago, when I started this channel, I did Axe FX versus The Real Deal. And the Axe FX was pretty good in a lot of ways. But that that was six, seven years ago. And the technology's come an extremely long way since then. I can only imagine what it's going to be five years from now. Now, that being said, I'm kind of worried about what happens with the machine learning when it comes to actually performing on records because the machines are eventually going to do it better than the humans. And then we're going to get, instead of this boring sanitized crap we're getting today, we're probably going to get it even more boring and even more sanitized. So who knows, man? Are we going to be listening to robots in the future, uh, given current production techniques? Probably. I know it's off topic, but why the hell do you have a gun in your logo for? Don't get me wrong, it's nothing political. I just find it odd and misguiding. Is it because the, the base is sex you execute them on the spot? Anyway, dude, I love your channel. Well, Carl, thanks for asking the poignant question. Uh, I got asked this a few times over the years. Uh, yeah, the old SMG gun logo. When I came up with this, I think I think we came up with this back in 2012 or something like that. This is when I branched out from Spectre Sound to Spectre Media because I started doing uh, band photography and music videos and that kind of thing. And it just kind of morphed into the whole YouTube thing. Um, I wanted something that was instantly recognizable in terms of a logo. So I hired a local college kid and we went through several revisions of the design. And this is what he ultimately came up with, with the negative space on the G. But it was like Spectre Media Group, SMG, Submachine. Machine gun. Yeah, that's where that came from. Uh, the reason we went with the gun is because skulls and dragons have already been done. That and I didn't want it to look like a ridiculous death metal band logo. How do you think about people like Christian Kohler when it comes to drums? He records a snare sample of the same snare drummer and miking that he has going on to use the extra snare sample on. It allows to add extra top end and extreme processing on the snare without having to use weird sounding gating tricks to tame the bleed. I started to get into this and it works great. It's the same snare, same performer. I have the same sample be triggered by the drummer as well. It allows me to do anything to the snare mixing wise. I still use the original track, but support it with a sample. Fuck you, Glenn. Hey, Eds, that's a really great question. I mean, like, you know, there's an ethical thing there. It's like, are we cheating the listener? That's always been my main concern when I throw samples on drums. It's like, well, doesn't the fucking person buying this record deserve maybe a little bit of honesty? But then again, it comes down to the client, you know, how make big can you make them sound like they really don't? Now, the one thing I've got that a lot of other producers don't have right now is time. I have the ability to sit there and massage the absolute best mix I can out of a drum performance, whereas if somebody's working in a commercial setting for labels and whatnot, they might not have the time or the budget to put into that sort of thing. So they have to cut corners because nobody pays for records anymore. Budgets are almost nothing and they have to get a product out any way they can. Unfortunately, you know, it doesn't matter how much I bitch and complain about that situation. It is not going to change. And producers have to do what they have to do. Everyone that complains about live drums can't track live drums. The lack of ability causes some to lash out. Not a good way to run any studio if you don't have an open mind. Yeah, I've often wondered about that. A lot of people who complain about live drums and whatnot probably have never actually done it before or don't have the ability. And believe me, I'm not trying to rub anyone's nose in it. It's taken me a very, very, very long time to master the art of recording live drums. I remember when I was in college, you know, the big thing is was, why do the drums sound like shit? And it took me years to actually answer that question. And I even started out with V drums. So believe me, I get it. It's, it's a very long learning process. It's definitely worth putting the time in, no question about it. But if you're expecting to be able to master it in a couple of days, yeah, it doesn't work like that. Glenn, for the love of God, you get STEM degrees at college too. Will you stop adding fuel to the anti-intellectualism fire? What we saw at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th was a bunch of smug people who don't trust the educated. 
Well, there, Agent Murphy 286. I have to clarify there. I am definitely in favor of the sciences and technology fields in case my last little rant didn't make that clear. I said we need programmers, but yes, I could definitely go farther. We also need physicists. We need mathematicians. We need all of that. Way more than we need liberal arts degrees. I am definitely not an anti-intellectual. As the saying goes, I fucking love science. There is absolutely nothing wrong with a great education. I highly recommend that everybody gets one. All right, everybody, that's it for SMG viewers comments for another week. Thanks so much for writing in. It's great hearing from all you guys. If you got a comment or a question, please leave it below. I love reading what you guys have to say, and I love putting your awesome questions on the show. That's why we're 286 episodes into this. Once again, I've got the Evidence or STFU shirts up for grabs this weekend. That sale is going to last a Sunday night. And I've also got the Got Polio Me Neither shirt. Two. Both those sales are going to end Sunday night, and then I'm putting them away for good. So if you want to grab one, grab it now while you can. Anyway, if you like the video, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. It would really help out a lot. And if you want to learn more about recording, check out one of my tutorial playlists for drums or guitar. Definitely worth checking out. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next episode.